JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today's the 27th of December 2021. So, yeah, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this um, Monday's morning recording. Um, so, yeah, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, just to see how everything's kind of getting along. Uh, but, yeah, um, before we uh, before we go further, basically, I just wanted to re remind again that um, doing these as recording for now, um, oh, once I get back to my usual spot, then yes, I mean, we can go, go back into live mode again. So, but uh, just also to mention as, uh, one thing that um, we won't have any traders espressos uh, for the remaining of the week. Um, I will resume um, on um, on the 3rd of uh, January. So, yep, um, basically this is the last trading, uh, tra last trader's espresso video for this year. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see what the markets have prepared for us for today, for this week. Now, uh, before we go further, um, a quick um, a quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So you have to check it out here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So now then guys, um, the first one I wanna jump in here is Nikkei 225. The index opened today lower corrected a little bit to the downside but that's all fine everything seems to be kind of in line with the uh the idea here now when i talked about a possible maybe corrective move lower here but uh for now uh let's keep an eye on this one and uh yeah i mean it's not really uh critical or anything like that no it's just a nice little healthy correction if it stays above that 21 day ema or even the 200 day ema um then yes i will consider a f uh, another push uh, higher here towards this uh, upper side of the symmetrical triangle where the index is currently trading in so so yeah keep that in mind um now, uh, jumping into Shanghai Composite here, um, looking at this picture, um, oh, let me just uh, tidy up a little bit there, and I think I'll remove all the drawings and kind of have a start, new fresh start. Um, so, if you remember last week, I talked about this little uh, tentative upside line that got broken, um, but I will, like I said, I removed it because again, it's very, it was very, very tentative. Mm, now I would say, um, looking at this picture here, um, yes, we're seeing as a slight little uh, move lower and the move back uh, below the um, back below the uh, the 21 day EMA. But like I said, as it's also not critical just because. Uh, we are uh, still kind of trading above some of these e other EMAs. Um, and to be honest, I would consider maybe a move lower on this one if we drop somewhere below this uh, 3,589 territory. Um, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low. And then, yes, we could aim for that 100-day EMA or even the 200-day EMA. Um, for the upside, um, in order to get comfortable with uh, higher levels, a push above the 3,649 level would be needed. Now jumping into German index DAX. Um, so yeah, uh, the index uh, was closed on um, on the 24th. Um, so yeah, let's see how today's day is gonna uh, trade because, um, well, um, we had a uh, good run to the upside. Uh, we had those um, we had those runaway gaps here, as you can see here. Um, but what I said to you last week was that in order to uh, maybe let's say examine the upside, further upside, a push above this 15,834 level would be needed. A nice good pop above it, yep, would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, more buyers uh, may join in. 
So um, if we take a look at the cash index right now, we're to see where it is currently, we're seeing a slight little corrective move lower. Um, the price is uh, roughly around that 15,710 zone. Um, yeah, I mean, for now, um, yeah, we are seeing a slight little corrective move, but it's not, like I said, it's not something to maybe worry about too much. Um, if you're looking maybe for a uh, move lower, maybe a little, a larger correction to the downside, I would probably prefer to wait for a drop below that 15,593 territory right here, marked by the high of the 22nd of December, and then uh, we could consider maybe a um, move um, a move lower um, uh, towards this upside support line uh, which is drawn from the low the 11th of December of 2020 um, so yeah and uh, and then of course we would take it from there but for now that's the game plan so if you're looking for some uh, let's say lower levels in the near term uh, drop below this 15,593 territory would be needed for the upside I would like to wait for a push above that 15,000 um, and uh, well, I mean, as you can see here, I've drawn another line here, the 15,781 zone. Uh, you, you could keep an eye on that one just in case, but uh, still um, the more important level to watch is this 15,830 for uh, zone right here marked by the high of the uh, 8th of December, or in other words, the current highest point of December. Now jumping into the S&P 500. So um, here, uh, let me just, uh, yep, here we have an index which managed to climb higher but failed to reach its all-time high um, on the 23rd. And uh, yeah, I mean, looking at the cash index right now, we're seeing a slight little corrective move uh, lower, but that's not really something uh, like I said, uh, maybe to worry about yet, unless we start maybe dropping, uh, I would say somewhere below this 4,651 level right here, uh, then, uh, because at the same time, we would be placed back below the 21 day EMA and potentially more sellers could join in. So anything, any, like I said, any move lower here up until this, let's say this area, might be classed as a temporary correction uh, before another possible leg of buying. So keep that in mind. And of course, we're keeping an eye on that all time high because it's quite interesting to see if uh, will we um, hit a new all time high this year or will this remain the, the the highest point of the year so that's going to be quite interesting to watch guys. Be very careful if you're trading this index and uh, yeah. Um, if we do pop above the um, of the above this barrier, the 4,000, and let me just up oh, there we go, 4,740. Well, let's round it up here, 44 uh, area. If we pop above it, uh, yes, this will confirm a fourth coming higher high. More buyers could join in, but then always uh, keep your eyes on the close because we might go higher, we might create a new all-time high, but if by the end of the day, for example, it still reverses lower and closes be below the previous. Um, all time high. Now that's yep where it could become uh, tricky a little bit with further advances. Uh, DXY dollar index. So um, here, um, to be honest, the same story here. Uh, still, I'm keeping an eye on the on this little potential range um, and. I think that there's not much to talk about here just because, um, yeah, for now, uh, we're keeping an eye on these two uh, levels here uh, within the within this uh, range, the 96.64 and the 95.85 levels. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at the moment, we're just kind of oscillating around that 21 day EMA. Um, and uh, yeah, at the moment, I wouldn't say that there's much excitement here uh, unless you per unless you like to trade ranges. Um, gold, uh, gold is yeah pushing higher, at least trying to do so. Um, I would like to see a push above this uh, this whole hurdle, this whole uh, resistance area um, in between the 1814 and 1815 levels. So this strong area of resistance here, uh, that's the one that I'm keeping an eye on right now. Uh, you can see that we're continuing to trade above this upside line as well, taken from the low of the 9th of August. So everything's kind of a little bit pointing to the upside, 
but um, as I said, uh, confirmation break is needed. So uh, long story short, uh, for now, for now, um, in order to uh, in order to go for some higher levels, yes, a push above this barrier is required. Uh, for the downside, well, it's uh, also kind of quite straightforward. A break of this upside line and a drop below the 1785 territory might do the trick for a few more sellers. Uh, WTI oil very quickly on this one, and uh, this one's drifting back down. So uh, to be honest, everything's still okay because uh, yes, we got a hold up near this 108 EMA but uh, now yeah we're kind of falling back below that 73.11 zone to be honest I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, focus on this level too much now because we kind of had a had our moment here with it um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep an eye on that 21 day EMA because at the moment we're still above it um, yes the 100 day EMA did provide strong resistance so that's gonna be my area that I'm gonna be keeping close eye on that's uh, I would say roughly around here and roughly around that 73.72 zone and I could pop above it yeah we would place the commodity above all of its EMAs in our daily chart here and potentially more buyers could join in so keep that in mind but for now yes we're seeing that little corrective move lower everything's still fine so we could see uh, maybe a further uh, correction towards that 21 day EMA but if it holds a nice little reversal back to the upside could be possible uh, for the downside I would rather maybe stick to this the same 69.47 50 area approximately around there um, and of course uh, this 200 day EMA a nice drop below it may uh, clear the path towards the downside. Um, Ethereum, <clears throat> very quickly on this one, um, we're getting into a squeeze a little bit here, as you can see. So um, it seems that maybe, just maybe, um, the crypto is preparing for a slight pop. Um, also, we broke this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 1st of December. We can get rid of it now, but we will recycle it because uh, what's happening here, let me just quickly put this on the chart. It seems that we are forming or could be forming a possible ascending triangle pattern here. Um, and the upper side of it is near this 4,145 territory, approximately around there. Um, so if we clear this level, then yes, we could go for some higher levels. I mean, according to all the TA rules, of course, the higher uh, the percentage is higher for the upside. However, we still have seen this happening the opposite way, and uh, that's why always, although maybe this could be seen as a bullish indication, um, wait for that confirmation break. Um, now, AUD and ZD jumping into a few pairs, one of my favorite ones, and I'm going to finish off uh, this year with uh, <laughs> with this one. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, so far, kind of okay, but I, would, I will have to say that, in a way, uh, this rising channel pattern partially worked out. Yes, we kept on kind of trading around this upper side of the rising channel. So everything kind of was quite interesting here, but uh, it's time I think to get rid of it. Uh, I, will, I will only get rid of the upper side of it because I'm going to keep this upside line here for now. Uh, but more, what's more important is that we managed to reach that 1.06, uh, 18, 20, or sorry, yeah, uh, no, sorry, not 19, but 1.06, 12 territory. We managed to reach that. That's the highest point of October. We overshot it a few times here. As you can see, it, this barrier is providing strong, strong resistance. So in other words, if you're looking for some upside, then yes, I wait for a nice good, uh, we wait for the bot at least a body of the daily candle to remain uh, above this hurdle at the moment we're just getting these little false breakouts so yep um, if we do stay above it then my next target will be somewhere around here 1.07 40 level and then we'll take it from there but of course we do not exclude a potential for example if this barrier continues to provide a hold up maybe finally we could see that little uh, that, that large not sorry not little but maybe a bit of a larger correction to the downside towards that 200 day EMA and if it holds somewhere around here uh, maybe a nice little rebound back to the upside could be possible for the downside I would need to see a break of this upside line here taken from the low of the 19th of November and then yes uh, I would consider maybe larger extensions to the downside here um, US dollar against the Turkish lira of course I need to mention this one before we, we uh, leave for 2021 uh, well 
before we leave 2021 jump into and go forward to 2022 um there we go um so yeah uh us dollar against the turkish leader i mean talk about crazy trading here i mean this is just amazing to watch and uh yeah uh we've we've traveled higher we've this year we managed to create a an all-time high near the 18.36 roughly around there um and uh yeah when then look i mean look at this i mean we after a speech from erdogan and uh, yeah that's what we that's what we got we got a drift lower but everything kind of was quite technical here um so we managed to reach this upside line taken from the low of the 7th of september from which uh, we rebound we are rebounding right now so i would say um everything's quite interesting um one thing that probably you could keep an eye on here is again uh, again uh, draw fibonacci because i mean it worked uh, i've drawn the fibonacci last week and it worked nicely so once again i mean you can draw it here and keep an eye on that 23.6 percent retracement on the fibonacci here so it's roughly around that 12.14 15 zone um of course if that gets clear then I'll, I'll aim for that 21 day ema um or the 38.2 percent retracement on the fibonacci and then yeah so on and so on um so probably that that's the um probably one of the kind of the, one of the best tools right now that could help in this on this particular pair is the yeah is the fibonacci are the fibonacci levels so you can draw those in your chart and just to see approximately what can you know how it can work out here so uh, but my, of course like i said my first target is the 23.6 percent retracement uh usd jpy very quickly on this one and uh yeah so so far so good here for the bulls i mean we're traveling higher the only only concern here that I have is let me just put this on the chart I mean not saying that this could be the case but of course we need to always evaluate all the options um, I'm hoping that this might not be a, a rising uh, veg pattern but if it is rising veg pattern then well guys I mean maybe um, a drift lower could be possible later on but again at the moment uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on this one for now I'm gonna have it like I said on the chart here uh, we will evaluate this again uh, on the 3rd of January we'll see how it, it worked out or not but um, but even if it is a uh, rising veg pattern which according to all the TA rules tends to break to the break to the downside still you need a confirmation break you need to wait for a confirmation break you need to wait for uh, a break of the lower side of this formation and then we could go for some lower levels so so yeah that's why for now guys um, it, as long as it stays inside the pattern it could continue uh, slowly rising uh, GBP is the very quickly on this one so this one's looking quite positive I would say still I mean that's it's trading above that 1.3375 level so everything's kind of looks quite nice and dandy here um, of course the only thing is to worry is um, this little uh, medium term tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the 1st of June so in other words I mean this move higher could still be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying so keep that in mind uh, for the downside here now if you're looking for some lower levels probably wait for a drop below the 21 day EMA and then we could maybe consider uh, a bit of a decline maybe even back to the uh, lowest point the current lowest point of December near the 1.3161 level uh, GBP and ZD so uh, this one's also quite interesting because as you can see here it's um, still trading above the subside line taken from the low of the 8th of November um, and we are close to this 1.9713 zone the one that I talked about last week so in other words um, also quite a bullish indication here uh, but but uh, as always wait for that confirmation break so we need to see a nice good move, strong move above this area in order to aim for uh, some higher levels and one, one of those higher levels of course is that psychological two level and uh, yeah and then we will take it from there but uh, also do not exclude a possible break of this upside line 
um, but if we do break and if we do break that upside line um, then maybe um, I'll keep an eye on this little hurdle here the 1.95 60 territory um, that's the low of last week and uh, if we drop below it then maybe we it could it could open the door towards some higher oh, sorry some lower levels so keep that in mind uh, GBP Aussie very quickly on this one this one's quite interesting as well um, just because from the kind of slightly shorter term perspective I would say oh, but let me just grab a trend line um, it seems that maybe just maybe we are coiling up here a little bit so uh, which means that um, let me just put this on the chart so this is not an ideal triangle I would say but nevertheless um, uh, it's showing you have signs of coiling up so that means that we are going to be waiting for this one to make a strong move out of this formation and once it does that I mean if it breaks the upper side then we'll go for some higher levels but if it breaks the lower side then certainly yes this could open the door towards some lower areas so in other words for now we're just kind of neutral on this one and we're, we're just observing the price action. Um, Euro GPY very quickly on this one as well. So I talked about this one on Friday and uh, well, as you can see why it's interesting because it's close to this downside line right now taken from the high of the 20th of October. Um, and uh, yeah, we're waiting for this one to make some sort of a move. Um, now I'm gonna redraw this level here. I'm gonna put it as 129.75. Uh, 76 approximately around there um, so if we clear this level this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially more buyers could join in um, however if this downside line continues to provide uh, resistance then certainly yes maybe a drift back down could be possible however I would prefer maybe to um, actually let me just put a chart here uh, put a sorry put a line on the chart um, maybe somewhere around this territory or depending on how this is going to trade or maybe actually in this 128.98 zone so if we drop below that uh, yes and we drop also below the 21 day EMA then yes uh, maybe I'll consider like I said a bit of a, a corrective move to the downside here however uh, one thing for, of course to keep in mind we do have this little upside line taken from the low of the uh, 6th of December which could provide some maybe temporary a temporary hold up uh, euro cad very quickly on this one so I'm gonna finish off uh, yep this video with euro cad as well oh, sorry not not this video but um, yeah I'm gonna pick up on euro cad and then left for the last time this year um, so Again, um, to be honest, um, as much as it's it looks attractive, uh, at the same time it's being quite annoying because to be honest, as well, it's not really uh, very technical. So it's kind of. Uh, seems like it's following like the footsteps of, of Euro G GBP as a kind of random walk here. But um, yeah, looking at this picture. Um, you can see that this barrier here, the uh, the lowest point of July, near the 1.4606 territory, did provide that resistance. Although we saw a few overshoots here, but it still kind of uh, held nicely. Um, but the most important is that it fell back below the 108 EMA and below this 1.4554 zone I talked about previously. Um, to be honest, I mean, if oil continues to rally, then yes, we might see EuroCAD drifting back down here towards this 21 day EMA or even all the way back to this upside support line too from the low the 26th of November so yeah keep that in mind um, now um, in order to consider maybe the upside I would I would stick to this 1.4606 level and then I would go for maybe some higher levels and uh, yeah at the moment guys it's not really like I said it's not ideal here um, not really liking uh, this pair too much right right now um, for the downside I mean it's at least in the near term uh, a, a nice good drop uh, below that 21 day EMA yep, may like I said lead to this upside support line um, Euro USD finally so um, probably um, it if it makes a move this week that's great um, but uh, to be honest at the moment as you can see yourselves here we're still ranging and uh, still waiting for a clear move out of uh, this territory let me just highlight this uh, this area right here 
um, and uh, yeah, this one, this is the upper side of that range, and of course, you can see the lower side of that range. So, uh, long story short, uh, clear. We need to see a clear breakthrough one of these sides here in order to consider the next short-term directional move. But as I said before, that if we pop above the upper side here, still watch out for this downside line taken from the high of the first of June, and for the downside, watch out for the uh, lowest point of November initially. But if that gets cleared, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and potentially more up, uh, lower levels could be met. So guys, um, yeah, that's it for this session. Um, first of all, thank you very much for um, kind of joining in and watching my videos this year, guys. I really appreciate that, and you, you cannot, I cannot stress that enough i mean how much it means for me so thank you very much for all that for all your support for all your comments likes um and uh, yeah your views guys really appreciate that so i hope i hope this year was useful and i really hope um next year could be uh, an in will be an interesting one and i believe that it could be an interesting one so so yeah um let's see what next year is going to prepare for us or how we'll, how we'll have installed for us uh but for now happy new year have a great uh kind of holiday this this whole holiday period um and uh don't forget to relax and uh let's meet up uh, in the new year, fresh and relaxed and, uh, yeah, joyful. And, uh, um, and guys, I, I, like I said, I think we can, uh, make 2022, uh, even better. So thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye-bye.